Let us learn small incision cataract surgery together. This video is meant for ophthalmology residents all over the world. This is a totally unedited surgery and you are not going to miss anything. After applying few drops of povidone iodine over the ocular surface, the ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated with BSAs or ringolactin. And now a muscle hook is taken in the right hand and the superior rectus holding forceps in the left hand. The eyeball is turned down, the superior rectus tendon is held and a brittle suture is passed. But in this case this is not nice. Either the tendon is very lax or the needle has gone through the tenons capsule. So I try again. Try to hold the tendon. Once we hold the tendon, we can feel that we have hold a thick tissue and the eyeball can be easily moved holding that tissue. The brittle suture has been passed again and now the eyeball is fixed. Once this step is done nicely, the rest of the steps become easier. Experts can do surgeries without this step, without brittling the superior rectus tendon, but residents should learn how to brittle a superior rectus tendon. And now peritomy is being done for three clock hours from 10.30 o'clock to 1.30 o'clock or from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. This is the tenons. A nick is made in the tenons. It is separated from the sclera. We have to expose the scleral surface. We should not apply bipolar weight field cautery over the tenons. So this is uh, peritomy from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock and now bipolar weight field cautery is to be done. Experts can do surgeries without even doing this step but to for the beginners you should do this step but be very careful don't do too much cautery just mild cautery to stop bleeding. And now is the time to place the incision. I usually take a 50 number bird perker blade and place the initial incision. The depth of this incision should not be more than half thickness of the sclera. It should be between one third and half thickness. But this there is no guarded knife, so you just have to learn how deep to go by trial and error or you can use a guarded knife to place the initial incision. This is a crescent blade. It is being used for making the tunnel. The eyeball is moving a lot, which means the superior rectus brittle suture is not nice. And now I am trying to fix the eyeball with this tooth forceps. I'm trying to make the tunnel on the left side. Mm. 
and I have got I made half the tunnel and now I sweep backward and to the right from the central point and make the tunnel on the left side so we have got a very nice corneal valve and this wound will be self sealing this is our side port at around 8 o'clock and now an air bubble is injected and then the anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue dye the dye is then washed out with simco cannula and ringolactate Two percent HPMC is then injected to fill up the anterior chamber. This cataract is pre intumescent. As soon as we make a puncture, no fluid comes out. So we can try Rexis at on go but there is increased convexity of the anterior surface so we have to be very careful the rexis is in progress a 26 case band needle is being used to do the rexis here it tends to go to periphery but I could retrieve it and here is completion of an apple shepherd Capsulorexis. And now the sclerocorneal tunnel is to be opened. The keratome goes to the anterior extreme of the tunnel, then it goes downward and it cuts tissue only when it goes forward and now is the time to do hydro dissection PSS is passed just under the anterior capsular rim and the nucleus tends to prolapse but this is a hard and big nucleus so it didn't prolapse into the anterior chamber now I inject some HPMC now to improve visibility I'm going to remove some cortex from the anterior aspect of the lens mass yes now I can see the hard brown nucleus clearly now I'll be able to prolapse it easily before I prolapse it into the anterior chamber I inject visco again take a Sinsky hook rotate the nucleus lifting one part of the equator rotate it all around and it prolapses into the anterior chamber now I inject visco both in front and behind this nucleus and now I use this irrigating vectors for removing this nucleus. 
this is a very a nice smooth delivery of the nucleus and now cortical cleanup is to be done um, using a 23 gauze simco cannula to remove this cortex first i do irrigation for some time to dislodge the cortex that is uh, sticking to the cornea so that visibility improves and then i start aspirating the cortical matter so cortex from the inferior aspect is being removed by the simco going through the main incision the anterior wall of the sclerocorneal tunnel is lifted up little bit to decrease leakage of ring lactate through the main wound now i have gone through the side port to remove the cortex from the superior aspect from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock yes the cortical cleanup has been very satisfactory little bit of cortex was there at 6 o'clock it has come out and now the capsular bag as well as the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose in this case we are going to implant a rigid intraocular lens PMMA lens from Apasami Associates this is known as Liberty intraocular lens and here it goes the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is placed in the bag with the help of these MacPherson's forceps. And now the lens is dialed to place the haptics at 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock meridian. Now we have to do visco cleaning. Whatever viscoelastic substance we use during cataract surgery, we must remove it thoroughly because all viscoelastic substance can cause a raised intraocular pressure if a significant amount of this viscoelastic material remains in the anterior chamber. In this case, first I have used and I am using the 23G Simco first and then I take an irrigating cannula and irrigate the anterior chamber very nicely. This irrigating proof can go behind the intraocular lens and remove some visco from the capsular bag but in this case it has been done with the Simco this is a bit of moxifloxacin now the paracentesis wound is closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of it and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber this is going to remove any visco in the anterior chamber angle in the anterior chamber from the corneal endothelium and the antechamber is formed very nicely and now how to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus we can put a releasable suture at the right end of the peritomy the 
the wounds are checked so that we can detect any leakage. Subjective spittle suture is healed and this is subconjunctival injection of gentamicin. And what happens is the conjunctiva comes forward by this subconjunctival injection and we can complete the surgery without putting any suture. So here we complete the surgery. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in doing in learning small incision cataract surgery.